Hello and welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we teach you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. Today uh, we're doing a special request from my friend Aya uh, in Japan and hopefully, hello Aya, hopefully you're watching with your mom and maybe even your English class. And what Aya has asked to learn how to make is pulled pork. And so the, the thing with pulled pork is you want something that is going to be cooked um, for a long time and let that sauce incorporate itself into the meat. Um, what we've got today is a, about a five pounds of pork uh, shoulder roast. Um, normally uh, with pork, um, there's sort of two main kinds of roast you're going to get there. One is the loin roast. That's the one where it's in a nice long strip. It's basically the, the same part of the, uh, the pig that they would make pork chops out of. And that's really nice for slicing because all of the meat is on the same grain. With a picnic roast, it's kind of, it's a joint where everything is all higgledy piggledy and there's uh, well marbled with fat. Personally, I don't like it for a roast because it's hard to carve. Uh, but for something like pulled pork, it's ideal because it's got a nice mixture of meat and fat. Now, I've kind of started this a little bit before our filming. I have um, I took the roast, I trimmed off the excess fat, and um, I also have uh, had it sitting in the fridge overnight with a rub or a marinade on it. And I'll include the, uh, the recipe for this in the, in the description below. Uh, but basically what I've got here, I've cut it into four pieces so that there's more surface area covered by the rub. And this has got brown sugar, chili powder. I use smoked paprika. And paprika is one of those spices that not only gives you the flavor, but it also is a natural meat tenderizer. And uh, it's got garlic powder, salt, pepper, and cayenne pepper. So it's been sitting overnight in the fridge. And now I did take it out about an hour or so ago to warm up a little bit. A lot of times with meat, if you have it not really, really cold, uh, but closer to room temperature before you actually start to cook it, um, it will cook a little bit better. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by browning this, and then we're gonna add some more salt, or not salt, then we're gonna add some more sauce and uh, we're gonna cook it in our instant pot. If you're doing this in the slow cooker, uh, this is an all day kind of a meal. Because we're doing this in the slow cooker, it's gonna take us just a little over an hour to, to get this ready to go. So I'm gonna move the camera over and you can see what I'm up to here. Okay, so now I'm gonna start off with my instant pot and we're gonna put it on the saute mode, which as you remember from our uh, our previous things like the stew where we used our instant pot, uh, the saute mode acts like a hot plate and that's going to give us a chance to brown things before we put it into the, the pressure mode. Okay, so we're going to start by putting a little bit of olive oil in the bottom so that this doesn't stick too much. And we'll get that well coated. And, oh, as soon as I bring out the meat, here's cocoa. And, all right, so what we've got here, so you can see how with, with the, the pork, uh, the shoulder roast, there's uh, different layers of fat going through this. Um, I Like I say, I've trimmed off a fair bit of the outside fat, but there's still going to be a fair bit in that, and that's going to add to a lot of the moistness in this. And I've cut this into four pieces. I'm going to saute it two pieces at a time so I've got some good surface area. And I'm just gonna do this long enough to get it well browned. So we're browning each side about three or four minutes per side. And I'm just gonna hold that up oh, if I can. So you see how it's nice and brown now? And we'll do that on all the sides. And by doing that, that, that will help the color of the finished product. Okay, so the first two pieces are fairly well browned. And 
going to take a plate and set them off to the side. And then we'll do the other two pieces and then we'll get into making the sauce. Now, one thing I should mention is when I put these in the fridge, I did put it in a, in a plastic bag. And when this started off, it was... Hang on a second, I'll wait for the noise to die down. It was quite literally a dry rub that I put onto this meat, and yet I've ended up with all of this liquid. And um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this back into the sauce. I mean, it's perfectly good stuff, but this is just moisture that's come out of the meat and been added to the spices. But by doing it in a Ziploc bag like this in the refrigerator, while it was in the fridge several times in the, over the evening, I, I turned it over so it got all sides of the meat equally marinated. All right, so we fast forwarded a little bit here and our last pieces are now browned on the outside. Um, and they're a long way from being cooked in the middle, uh, but they're brown enough on the outside that we can move on to the next part. Um, so I'm just gonna move the camera right over the pot so you can see what I'm doing um, for the, the making of this sauce. Okay, so as you can see, our uh, Instant Pot is still on, but there's all this sticky stuff in the bottom, which is the, the, the residue. So we're gonna take a cup of chicken stock and just add, add that to the bottom to deglaze this. And I've got my lovely little Pampered Chef whisk here, and this is gonna be kind of steamy, so hopefully it comes out on camera all right. And that steam is really hot. <laughs> so I just was reviewing my last pictures there and I realized that we did have a little technical issue there where the steam uh, covered up the, um, the lens and it wasn't a very good picture. So I will go over this again um, where I used the chicken broth, which was the better than bouillon, one cup of that to deglaze the pan, which was taking all the, the sticky stuff out of the bottom of the pan. Uh, and that's what caused the camera to steam up. We've also added uh, water, um, apple cider vinegar, uh, which is a, a, a vinegar that is uh, made, made from apples and it's got a different flavor than your plain white vinegar or red wine vinegar or white wine vinegar. Uh, we've added tomato paste, and I'll give you a little close up of that, where our tomato paste is, uh, so far we're using half a can, we will use the other half later on. Um, if I wasn't using the other half, I would take this half a can, put it on a piece of plastic wrap, spread it around a little bit, cover it up and seal it well, and then pop that in the freezer so I've got it for the next time a recipe calls for half a can of tomato paste. And uh, we had some ketchup and some brown sugar. And then I added uh, some onions and uh, just a, uh, onions that are quartered and the rest of the... Uh, the leftover marinade. And now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our lid on, having checked that my seal is good on there. And little musical notes tell me that we are locked up. Okay, so since I'm using the pressure cooker mode on this, I make sure that uh, the um, it is uh, locked so that the steam will be held in. And I'm just going to put this on manual but I'm going to do it for a full 60 minutes. So that's kind of the equivalent of doing this for the whole day uh, in, our, um, in a slow cooker. But uh, 60 minutes plus our time to, um, to get it up to pressure. So we're looking at about an hour and a quarter. Okay, here we see we're ready to go. So we're looking about an hour and a quarter before this is ready to go. And so we can just leave it be and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, and we're back. And I not only gave this lots of time to cook for its full hour under pressure, uh, but I've also given it about an extra half hour because I ran to the store and did a few other errands while this was going on. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to release the pressure and just uh, that shouldn't be too much since it's been on low for about half an hour. 
Oh, sure enough, it's already done its release thing. So um, here we go, a little magical thing. We'll open her up. And that looks just beautiful. So what we've got here, oh, it's falling apart in, I can't even pick it up with the tongs. It's falling apart that easily. And you can't ask for much better than that. So we're going to lift this out. And if you can see how easily that breaks apart. And that's what pulled pork, pork should be doing. So we're going to lift out all of the meat and the onions. And then we'll get back to work on our, add a, a few finishing touches to the sauce. Now we're going to put this back onto the saute mode, which as you remember is the part where it's it's just heating from the bottom as if it was a frying pan. And we're going to add in the rest of our tomato. We're going to add in the rest of the tomato paste. little cans it's hard to get it out of the bottom sometimes okay rest of the tomato paste and a half a cup of sugar and the rest of the uh, about half a cup of ketchup Delicious. And by waiting until the end to add in the extra sugar, that means it's less likely to, to burn. The, the extra sugar can make it inclined to burn a little bit. Make sure we've got this tomato paste, ketchup, brown sugar, Right. Okay, now all we're going to do here, like this, this is, a, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer, but we're about halfway up the pot with liquid, which is certainly more liquid than what we had started with. Uh, but we now want this to reduce so it thickens. So I'm going to pull in for a little bit of a close up and then we'll let this simmer for at least 15 minutes, maybe a little longer to reduce in volume. So there you can see we're up to about here. And the other thing is that if there was a lot of fat in this, just the same as when we did the gravy, that, that fat is going to rise up to the surface. So we, we can um, eliminate some of that fat. And as a matter of fact, I think I might do that right now before we get too far into the cooking process. So I'm not going to take all of the, the sauce out. I'll skim the majority off of it. And just the same as with the gravy, by putting it into a container that's relatively tall, that allows us to take that uh, that fat off the top easier. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit to let the, the, the fat rise to the surface. And in the meanwhile, this has started to, to bubble up nicely. And then while that is bubbling up nicely, all we're going to do is take a couple of forks, ordinary everyday forks, 
quite literally pull this apart, which is what pulled pork is all about. And if there's a spot like this where it's an obviously big chunk of fat, I'm going to take that off. That's just my own personal taste, I'll say. Um, you know, some people that don't mind a little little chunk of fat in their in their meat, but I'm. Uh, one of those folks that pr would prefer to not have a mouthful of fat. Now, because I had trimmed a lot of the fat off, it turns out that there's not very much fat that was part of this, but I'll also pour that off. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do while we're waiting for this sauce to uh, reduce in volume and it's gone down maybe an inch already, so we've still got a little bit of time. So we're going to make a little bit of coleslaw because there's one nice finishing touch with the pulled pork sandwich, and that's to top it with a little bit of coleslaw. I don't want to do too much, but I've got enough here to, to manage. So again, making sure that I'm just going down the knuckles on my hand to slice this very thinly. And I could put the cabbage through the food processor, but I think when you're putting it on a sandwich like this, I prefer the longer strands of cabbage. I'm just gonna slice that in half so that... There, so I don't end up with too big a chunk. Put that in, but then I will use the food processor for the rest of the process. And I've got an apple here. Hopefully I've got a good apple. Okay, so I've got the uh, food processor on with the big grater attachment. for the cook. So all I've got here is cabbage, carrots, and a little bit of apple. And with coleslaw, a little bit of onion is good, but I don't want to overpower it with onion. So rather than making my own dressing, I've got this bottled dressing, which is a sweet onion flavored dressing. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of that on. And I think that that should be enough onion flavor without overpowering everything else. If you want to make your own dressing, by all means, go right ahead, but... Uh, some things for the for the sake of the speed and the number of ingredients that it would take to make this. 
this is an okay way to go. very nicely back over to our sauce we're almost halfway so when we first started the the sauce was up about here now we're down to about there you can tell it's definitely a thicker consistency but I'm going to give it maybe another five or ten minutes. I would like it to be a little bit more on the, the syrupy side um, so that it coats the pork lovely in a lovely way. Okay, so we're about ten minutes along here. I'm just going to turn this off. And the sauce is definitely thickened up. Um, it's, it's maybe not quite as thick as ketchup would be, but it's, it's thicker than it was. And we'll just move this over. Hopefully I've got a good, good angle. There we go. And off to the side and this liner will be quite hot. So we're just going to pour that. Forks, getting this all now when I go to put this on the buns I'll use a, a slotted spoon so it doesn't end up being too gushy there may be some people that would want that sauce on the side if you were going to have a some fries or something with this and then what we do is we've got a bun here Take my little slotted spoon, make sure I've got the bottom of the bun. Oh. And then a spoonful of coleslaw on top of that. one spectacular looking sandwich there you go folks pulled pork on a bun with coleslaw so thank you for joining us once again at hilltop stovetop where today we made pulled pork and this is the pulled pork sandwich with coleslaw and uh, we hope that you like today's episode and that you will like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes uh, we will be getting into doing a little bit more of the Christmas baking before you know it. And then I also have an upcoming uh, episode uh, special for my Scottish friends um, coming. Uh, we're a month away or so from uh, St. Andrew's Day, but I am going to show you how to make Scotch eggs. Um, we're not going to do any haggis, but we will do Scotch eggs, which are a really uh, fun kind of, I'll call them a pub food, would be typically what they are and uh, something that you can make ahead and bring to a party if you wish and they're all individual servings so that's a going to be a special episode coming up soon we'll talk to you soon bye bye now